What was ruined for everybody by one person? I worked for a movie theater that had a loyalty program. For every dollar you spent, you earned one point. And different points get you free stuff. So 50 points get you a free popcorn, 100 get you two free tickets, and all the way up to 250 points where you get two free movie tickets, two large drinks, a large popcorn, and a candy. Then you would start back over at zero points and repeat. Now that's a lot of money, but the movie theater is expensive and points can easily accumulate. When you reach those point thresholds, when you receive prints, a voucher prints afterward, they don't expire and you can use them whenever you want. Someone, I assume a disgruntled employee that no longer worked for the company, got a hold of the kind of printer we use and started printing those vouchers. We were able to figure out that a lot of people that we would see regularly had a bunch of these vouchers and they were all ripped in a particular location. Each printer has a different ripoff point, kind of like a thumbprint for each individual printer. I took the liberty of going online and found this dude was printing them out in our similar format and selling them in bulk through Craigslist. We reported to corporate and we slowly took away the loyalty program. Every time we received a similar voucher, we would ask the patrons where they got it from. We even bribed them and said if they could give us information, we would honor the voucher. I don't know if they were ever caught, but the loyalty program was canceled for a long time. A new one took its place, but the benefits weren't as good. I guess sounds like upgrading the computer system so each voucher is activated and checked when redeemed would have been a better solution? Vouchers without a barcode or whatever will probably always be misused. Story 2. Back when I was in 7th grade, we had a field trip to this campsite place that used to be a part of the Underground Railroad. The trip was 5 days and one optional activity was to reenact what it would have been like to use the railroad as an escape servant. The people working there warranted that it was realistic and we had to sign a waiver saying we understood. The counselors worked as the servant owners and we had to escape from them as they chased us. We'd slip into the Underground Railroad and the activity was basically over. Some girls' parents sued the camp. The counselor would shout at us as we escaped to make it somewhat realistic. Real PG stuff. The worst was when they yelled something like, Help, the servants are escaping, which is a bit edgy. Well, according to the girl, the counselor called them inappropriate words and all else beside. Since we were in groups of five and the other four girls refused to testify, they actually got away with some five grand settlement as they knew they couldn't prove that they didn't do anything that she said they did. The school no longer goes on field trips, which was a real pain for 8th and 9th grade. Story 3 Was at a Marilyn Manson concert a few years ago? It was a few days after he collapsed on stage in Saskatchewan. My friend and I went to Vancouver for the concert and we were there for about 4 or 5 hours beforehand. We wandered around the building and found out that the venue we were at didn't have a parking garage, meaning his tour bus was in plain view. So a couple hours pass and we're standing and sitting around in a small crowd of like 10 or 15 people hoping to get to see him up close and maybe get an autograph. I've done this before, it works like 65% of the time. Lots of peeps, dudes, and dudettes came and went, but my friend and I, a few other peeps stayed. Finally, about two hours before the concert, he comes out of his tour bus with a couple of bodyguards. He stopped for a sec and my friend and I collectively almost whizzed ourselves. Not five seconds later, a schmuck, runty little bastard comes running up with a big fancy paparazzi camera and asks, How are you feeling, Manson? In the most condescending voice I'd ever heard and tries to go after him. Cue a bunch more security come rushing out, surround Manson and rush him into the building. Three hours waiting just for one little schmuck to ruin everything. He took off pretty quickly after that. He ran away before someone was able to get his camera away from him. For contacts, he was obviously some amateur photographer. He was probably younger than we were. We were only 18 at the time. After we were talking to another girl who was there, still hoping that the kid hadn't completely messed up our chances of getting to meet Marilyn Manson, and that kid had pulled that stunt at previous concerts at that location. We still had a lot of fun at the concert. We would have gone to see if he was around afterwards. That's usually the best time to get an autograph in my experience anyway. Except the concert went on longer than we thought it would and we had to catch the ferry back to Vancouver Island. We ended up missing it anyway and had to sleep in the ferry terminal. Totally worth it in our eyes. My mom's friend that accompanied us to Vancouver was a little mad though. Yeah, so that guy sounds like the paparazzi guy from like GTA 5, right? Story 4. There was a lawsuit in a school district that was brought by a parent because their show choir charged outrageous participation fees, like 1500 They argued everything at school should be free, no matter what. They won their case and now student fundraising is so messed up that no one can go anywhere because individual students don't have to fundraise at all and can expect to go on any trip for free. Oh, the band is going to Italy. I'm in a band. I want to go. No, I don't want to contribute financially. Yes, I still get to go without paying a dime. Do other kids still need to fundraise? Sure, but I don't have to or want to. 
However, anyone who fundraises, the amount goes into a pool, which must be divided equally among all who wish to go. No student's individual contributions can count towards that individual student anymore. The end result has been that many schools can't afford trips anymore and can't take the ones who can pay to go because these people cannot be guaranteed that their money will be used for them. And also they have to pay for and fundraise for freeloaders. It's a real nightmare. The idea that things at school should be free isn't a bad one, but this outcome did not guarantee schools more money to pay for trips and services that students normally fundraise for. This one parent literally ruined school fundraising across the nation. Story 5 I worked in a mall food court downtown throughout high school and college that had its own pay-to-park parking garage. All of the food vendors and the parking garage folks had a super not-so-secret system where any of the parking employees could get a free meal anywhere in exchange for free parking for food court employees. It worked out perfectly for everyone involved since parking was $8 for the day and a meal is around $8 anyway. This went on for two years until some girl at Panda Express had to go snitch to the actual president of the parking garage company about how she didn't have to pay for parking because everyone just gave the parking employees food whenever. The president then installed cameras in the parking attendant booth, fired 90% of the staff, and everyone had to pay to park from now on. The girl at Panda Express lost her job like a month later anyways. Eight bucks a day to park adds up especially in the summer when you're working six to seven days a week. Fortunately, I also attended the university that was two miles away, so I just parked there with my pass and walked to work, but I'll never forgive that Panda Express girl. Story 6. A guy at a place I worked ruined taking home old equipment. He used to be able to just take home old obsolete stuff or just stuff they weren't going to sell and it ended up being some interesting scientific kit to tinker with. One day the company was getting rid of a whole load of stuff at once and one guy asked if he could take some home. They said yes. He waited till after most people had gone home and arrived in an articulated lorry and filled it with spare parts, old kit, circuit boards, everything they were throwing away and he technically had permission. What he then did was sell it all online as refurbished spares and he never had to work again. Trouble is, it made it harder for the company to sell their spare parts so now no one can take home anything and then you had to smash things up with a hammer before putting them in the skip. Story 7. During my time in elementary and middle school, there was an exciting game we all played in PE or gym class called 8-Ball. It was a thrilling variation of dodgeball where eight balls were in play at once. The entire gym was the playing area, except for the bleachers, which were the loser's pit. The rules were simple. It was an elimination game where everyone, regardless of their group, could join in and have fun. Every Friday was dedicated to eight ball, and it was always a blast. However, things took a turn when Wayne joined our school. At first, he seemed cool, but he had a habit of not following the rules during eight ball. He would get tagged, walk towards the bleachers, and then sneak back into the game. One Friday, I was eliminated early and watched from the sidelines. I saw Wayne get tagged, sit down next to me, and then quickly get up to sneak back in. This time, the coaches caught him cheating and warned him that he'd be banned from future games if he didn't stop. He reluctantly returned to the bleachers. As the game continued with only about 12 players left, I noticed Wayne standing near the edge trying to catch stray balls. A large student threw the ball at another player who dodged it, causing the ball to go to Wayne. The coaches rushed over to assess the situation. The following Monday, 8-ball and similar games were banned from our school district. Story 8. I was working in Philadelphia doing deliveries for a catering company. At the end of the day, we'd sometimes have canceled orders and things that had accidentally been prepared twice. Now, the owners were two of the best guys I've ever worked for and decided, hey, why don't we give these delicious filet mignon, mashed red potatoes with roasted garlic, and all this other yummy stuff to the homeless shelter around the block? Bet they haven't eaten like this in years. So we take turns at the end of the shift bringing leftovers to the shelter and the employees in need always got some too, but there were usually multiple trays of high-end food to bring over. We got really friendly with some of the guys at the shelter too. Eventually, we all got called in and were told that the last night's food had been spiked with things. I'd actually gone with my coworker the night before because I wasn't feeling like biking home in the rain. Meaning someone at the shelter, employee, volunteer, or client went ahead with their disgusting plan. It was quickly found out, nobody was seriously injured, but who in the world makes someone do that? That was the only reliable brightness some of these guys had in their days, and not just to take it away, but to do so in such a cruel manner is absolutely beyond my capacity. And if you're connecting with any of these stories, please don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button for more videos just like this. Story 9 I used to work for Pepsi, delivering soda to restaurants and the like. 
A few guys had clubs on their routes because we mainly delivered during the day. The clubs were always nearly empty. On occasion, I was told the women would sometimes get bored and mess around and toss the delivery guys into chairs and give them free dances. Enter Marcel. Marcel was a sheltered college kid working for the summer. His mom was a higher up at the plant, so she got him the job. Apparently, Marcel delivered to a particular high-end club and was given a freebie dance. He couldn't stop talking about it and begged to be put on that route again. A few weeks later, Marcel gets put on the route again. And from what I understand, Marcel walked in, made his delivery, picked a girl and got a dance. And then Marcel was asked to pay $100. I guess it wasn't communicated to him that this was not a regular thing, that they don't do freebies when the boss was around, etc. Marcel had exactly $0 in cash, no credit card, nothing. At first, Marcel argued that he didn't know he'd need to pay, causing a scene, and security got involved and Marcel was asked to leave the keys to the Pepsi delivery truck and go find $100. Luckily, the guy on the neighboring route was able to swing by after 45 minutes with some cash, cash that a customer had paid for their delivery, so Marcel effectively paid for his dance with Pepsi's money, and then he had to ask his mom for cash that night back at the plant to pay back the guy who fronted him the money. So now Marcel's mom effectively paid for his lap dance. From what I'm told, not a single free lap dance has been given to Pepsi delivery guys since. I do have quite a few Marcel stories though. They hired temp workers for the busy summer months to ride in the trucks and help make deliveries. Marcel told his temp helper that they had to make this guy pay for his delivery today or else. I guess the temp guy took that to heart and pulled a weapon on the store owner when he asked to have the delivery charged to his account. Marcel nearly scared himself. The guy paid, though. Marcel was a ride-along helper on one of the bigger trucks that he wasn't licensed to drive. He convinced the driver to go see a movie over lunch, so they took a three-hour lunch break and went to the theater. He casually let this slip to his mom, who got the driver fired. Marcel once accepted a case of outdated Diet Coke, meaning the store couldn't sell it as a return. He forgot that Pepsi doesn't sell Diet Coke. Marcel once dumped a bottle of Pepsi on the Cisco guy's windshield because he took up two bays at the hospital delivery dock. He then watches the guy get repeatedly stung by bees as he tries to clean it off. He said kids riding bikes did it. Marcel proudly proclaimed that he let loose a store-clearing smell at the Walgreens on his route, like the staff had to walk outside. Marcel once delivered 500 two-liter bottles of soda to a Hazidic market only for them to refuse the entire delivery because they found some bottles not marked as kosher. Rather than load them all back into the truck, Marcel's lazy self apparently went up the street to the nearest temple and paid a rabbi to come bless the soda on the sidewalk. Marcel once dropped a temp worker off at his house an hour into the day because the dude slept in the truck for the first three deliveries. Marcel fell for the white van speaker scam. Look it up. I worked with Marcel a few times. He had his route planned out based on where he could get free stuff. Delis for breakfast sandwiches in the a.m., pizza places for free slices at lunch, ice cream places after that, and two 7-Elevens, one in the a.m. and one in the p.m. to refill his massive Slurpee. All in all, I watched Marcel eat two bacon, eggs, and cheeses, five slices of pizza, two soft-serve cones, six Mountain Dews off the truck, an XL chocolate chip cookie, a coffee culotta from Duncan, and of course, the two super-sized Slurpees, all for free. The company will on occasion give away soda to employees. They put pallets of it in a designated area so you know it's free to take. It didn't happen very often. When it did, it got cleaned out fairly quickly. Marcel got wind that a pallet was put out on his day off, and he showed up to work, grabbed nine cases of soda, and left. Marcel asked our boss if he could forego his paycheck and be paid in Mountain Dew game fuel. I think it was the World of Warcraft limited edition stuff. The boss told him to get off. Marcel was asked to take one of the free sample trucks and go hand out free samples at malls and parks, etc. He not only stopped at his house and kept half the samples for himself, but he crashed the truck. It was a souped up pickup with Mountain Dew graphics all over it on the way to the plant. He then delayed going to get tested because he smoked the weekend prior and somehow got away with it and had a clean test. Marcel fell asleep in his truck at lunch one time and didn't wake up until 5 p.m. Marcel got hit by a forklift in the warehouse. Marcel got free tickets to the Renaissance Fair and got kicked out for getting too hammered and throwing a smoked turkey leg into a crowd of elderly people. Marcel ate a giant bug on a $10 bet from another delivery driver one morning, got so ill that he never went out on his route and was sent home for the day. Marcel retched on his passenger side door at a party over the weekend and forgot to clean it off proceeded to park next to the CEO who called him at the AM sales meeting. 
Marcel had diarrhea in the bathroom of one of the pizzerias he delivered to that was so bad, the owner called Pepsi to complain. Marcel regularly honked at hot girls walking on the sidewalk. Marcel delivered to a college and intentionally took a longer route around campus to watch girls sunbathing. On merchandising duty, when Pepsi people go stock the soda shelves of supermarkets, that's right, the store doesn't do it, Marcel got in trouble for making his temp helper ride in the bed of his truck. He didn't want to see him in the cab because he, quote, smelled like trash. And Marcel thought it was funny to offer rides to the Hasidic Jewish people who were walking on the side of the road on Friday nights. They can't use cars after a certain time Friday evening through Saturday evening. Marcel had really bad poison ivy all over his body one week and had this cream he kept applying throughout the day. He made a pit stop to reapply the cream in a bathroom of a coffee shop and forgot to lock the door. A customer walked in on him as he was applying cream. Story 10. I'm lucky enough to work at a company that has catered lunches. I and other people who work in my vicinity always got really excited for barbecue day, mainly for the mac and cheese. I cannot overstate the dopeness of this mac and cheese. The noodles were tender but firm with a cheese sauce that had a smoky flavor that none of us could quite place. Well, none of us except one observant co-worker. He saw us all joyfully scarfing our delicious mac and upon smelling it, single-handedly destroyed our happiness with a single statement. Kind of smells like begging strips, right? Just like that, the spell was broken. That was a smoky flavor we couldn't place. It smelled and tasted exactly like begging strips, and none of us had put that together until that exact moment. I love that mac and cheese. Just goes to show, ignorance is bliss. Story 11. I went to a really small middle school. The 8th grade kids always took a trip to Six Flags at the end of the year. It was a school field trip, usually a week before graduation. Everyone looked forward to it for years. In my 8th grade class, there was a little person. He was super chill, everybody was his friend. It came up near the end of the year what we would do for the trip because if we went to Six Flags, he'd be left out because he couldn't go on the rides. As it turned out, he was totally fine with going. He didn't want to ruin it for everyone and he insisted that he was okay doing other stuff besides roller coasters, kiddie rides, games, whatever, so we were all stoked. Even though he said he was cool with it, his mom went to the teachers and principal and said that we couldn't go because of him. I don't know if it was like he said he was cool but he wasn't and had his mom deal with it or if she just wasn't cool with it. Either way, we didn't get to go. Instead, we went to a water park. It was still fun but it definitely wasn't the same. Going to Six Flags was a tradition that had gone on as long as I could remember. I'd gone to the school for 10 years as it was K-8. to One kid's rich dad felt badly though, so he paid for us to take a Hummer limo to the park instead of a yellow bus. And if you liked any of these stories, here's more for you. YouTube thinks you're going to love this. I'll catch you in that video and thanks for hanging with me on this one.